check out this retro Pong game built with an Arduino microcontroller development board. Steve Stephanidis, who does technical writing for Programming Electronics Academy, designed this really fun retro Pong game with only five components, well, and a resistor. And I really think you'll get a kick out of how this thing works. Stay tuned and we'll do an overview of its components and gameplay. If you want to learn how to program real, physical stuff, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see our latest videos on how to use programming to control your projects. So let's build this thing at like 5x speed. So Steve used an Arduino Nano for his design. When I built it, I ended up using an Arduino Uno with a Proto Shield on top. If you have no idea what an Arduino is or what an Arduino Shield is, Make sure to check out our other YouTube videos. We go into all those kind of details. So those proto shields can come in handy because it has a built-in solderless breadboard for prototyping something small right on top. It's kind of handy. The display for this is an OLED module. You can pick these up anywhere. I got mine on Amazon. These are super cheap and pretty easy to use with graphic libraries out there. Steve used the open source U8G library for this project. A piezo buzzer is on this board for adding sound effects for when the ball hits the paddle, the wall, and when you lose. I was pretty impressed with the buzzer noises coming from just a simple piezo buzzer. They actually sound pretty good. It kind of reminds me of some old school game. The last part is a rotary encoder. This is the dial that allows you to move the paddle back and forth. You can also press down on the dial, and this acts like a button that's used for adjusting different settings, which I'll show you in just a moment. Rotary encoders are fantastic little devices for building interfaces that have limited space, especially if you need to make a bunch of different selections. With the right code, you can track exactly where the shaft is at any given moment. If you're ever interested in learning about how to program these, we have an entire course at Programming Electronics Academy that covers how to write code to use these. You learn a bunch of things about interrupts in the process. It's pretty cool. The rotary encoder I used is breadboard friendly. That is, it's already soldered to a PCB base, so I can stick it right into the breadboard. Makes it easy. Again, all these components are stuff you could just grab on Amazon or any electronics vendor for that matter. So that's pretty much it for components, save a single 100 ohm resistor for the piezo buzzer. If you want to build this yourself, we'll have all the code, schematics, and parts you need linked in the description. Before we get into gaming on this, let's hear from our sponsor. Do you need a printed circuit board design software to move your prototype to the next level? All Team Designer is a great choice for designing PCBs, sharing your design with team members, and even getting your design manufactured. What really kind of blows me away about this software is that even though it's a super powerful tool, at the same time, it's really intuitive to use. They've got helpful video tutorials built right into the software so you can kickstart your learning process and actually get something made. Right now, you can get a free trial to All Team Designer with our link in the description. That's right, you can test drive this super powerful software with a free trial. Just check out the link in the description. I already uploaded the code on the Arduino board, and once you power this thing up, you can start playing immediately. You'll notice that when I first put this together, to my surprise, I had used an OLED display that had a yellow only bar at the top. So the whole top quarter of the screen is that yellow color and that bottom half is blue. I ended up really kind of liking the two-tone look though. It sort of reminded me of like a glitch you might see at some old arcade game in the back of a pizza shop. I'm like no hardcore gamer by any stretch, but I did used to play Pong at a local pizza shop when I was a kid. Those are some good memories. So to move the paddle, all you have to do is rotate the rotary encoder back and forth. And it's actually pretty darn responsive. If you see me missing the ball, it's just because my gaming skills are pretty subpar. Once you start the game up, the default settings are pretty easy. The ball moves nice and slow. When it hits a wall, the return angle is pretty easy to predict. It's just straight up easy mode. On the right hand side is a counter for all the times you've lost. Because, you know, I really need to remind it how much I stink at Pong. To adjust the settings, you just press on the rotary encoder. This puts the game into settings mode, and on the top right, you see the first option. You'll also notice the ball and the paddle go from being filled to being empty with only an outline on them. 
The settings are pretty easy to navigate, and again, it's the rotary encoder that handles all the adjustments. You can have the sound on or off. You just rotate to get to the spot you want, and when you're happy with the selection, you press the rotary encoder again. This brings you to the speed, which can be adjusted from 1 to 19. You can get that ball going super quick. Press the rotary encoder again, and you get to skew. Skew controls how the ball deflects off the walls and the paddle. The higher the skew, the more variability in the directions that the ball will bounce, and the harder the game becomes. The final selection is the paddle size, which again, you can adjust with the rotary encoder. Once you've made that last selection, by pressing the rotary encoder, the game starts again. Now I gotta tell you, Pong is such a classic. What I find fascinating about games is that sometimes it doesn't take amazing graphics to keep us entertained. Just some basic randomness and a simple play mechanic seems to do the job. And all of that can be programmed using an Arduino. In total, this was just over 400 lines of code, and I highly recommend you try it out. If you want to give it a go, there's a link below for the code and schematics, as well as links to all the components. If you'd like another video of us diving into this code, be sure to let us know down in the comments and hit the like button. Well, hey, thanks a ton for watching. If you want to learn how to code real stuff, check out the Programming Electronics Academy membership program in the description below. And if you want to build this project, we have links in the description to all these components. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get updates when we drop new videos. Hey, what do you think about this picture at the end? If you'd like to see a rendition of you working on Arduino in your shop or workspace or whatever it might be where you work on Arduino, send us your photo at bench at programmingelectronics.com and you might just see a rendition of it in one of our future videos. Thanks a lot. Have a great one.